In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today Jesus Christ comes with the good news that God cares for the poor, the captives, the handicapped, and all unhappy people. Jesus announces that God's love and acceptance are revealed in what he says and does because he is the one who fulfills the ancient prophecies about God's salvation. We also celebrate today the Sunday of the Word of God. May the Word of God pave the way for a deeper and more meaningful conversation in achieving positive change in our family, in the community, and especially in our country. So my dear sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries of God's love for us, let us call to mind our sins and ways that we refused to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah and of Jesus' life. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, and peace, peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, you we bless you, we, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, 
He read out of the book from daybreak till midday. In the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so far that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra, the prescribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to the captives Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us. I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings that you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news of him spread throughout the whole region he taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you Google life expectancy in first century, you will get 30 to 35 years average, 35 tops ang ikli ng buhay nila. No? But before paracetamol, penicillin, vaccines, plus back-breaking work before modern engineering, the first century human body really took a beating. So if scholars are correct in saying that Jesus died at 33 or 34, after around two years or so of ministry, then we realize that Jesus left home for public ministry pretty much at the end of his life. Matanda na siya, kumbaga. But hey, even then, for a good two years or so, Jesus made a huge difference in many anonymous lives. Those two years, we can say, would be his golden era, in the real sense of the phrase. When Jesus returned to Nazareth that day, he made a courtesy call to the guys. And what was the best place to find them and say hello? The old familiar synagogue service. Medyo matagal na siyang nawala. Marami na siyang nakita, narinig, natutunan sa mga karaniwang tao. Things he would have known very little of if he remained Nazareth-bound and tethered to the synagogue. In fact, he was an outstanding preacher by then, Luke says. And I figure Jesus would not have had so many hits and likes if he preached only the usual synagogue stuff. No, people found him compelling and credible because the sick, the dying, the grieving, the sinning, they all heard and saw their lives afresh from this man's strangely soothing stories and from the healing touch of his carpenter's hands. What a happy coincidence that day. The guys must have been eager to hear from him. The scroll they handed him had just the right words. Yun bang parang nag-Bible cutting ka? Tapos the verse that falls on you describes exactly what you've been through? So talk about prophetic. The verse from Isaiah happened to exactly describe where he'd been and what he'd been up to all this time away from home. Bringing glad tidings to the poor. Liberty to captives, sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed. Today, Jesus finally said, This is fulfilled in your hearing. Ito po ang mismong pinaggagawa ko sa aking buhay. I have fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy. Now, in a service like that, a Jew was expected to say something about the reading after proclaiming it. I guess parang homily natin ngayon, o yung sinasabi nilang patotoo. So knowing Jesus, I bet nakarinig sila ng kaunting pasaring. Kayo po, kamusta? Maghapon pa rin pala kayong nagdedebate tungkol sa salita ng Diyos. Eh kamusta po naman ang ating patotoo? Kumusta ang ating preferential option for the poor? Kamusta po ang mga dukha sa buhay natin? Mga bilanggo, may kapansanan, mga api. And you and I know how this story ends, right? Whatever Jesus said that day, it almost cost him his life. They mobbed him. But back to my point, my dear sisters and brothers, Jesus went full throttle on public ministry for only two or so years and at the cusp of life expectancy. If the churchmen and politicians did not kill him, he wouldn't have had long to live anyway either. But see, that's just a marvel about Jesus. 
He is the only historical figure I know who is still making a huge difference today, the world over, despite only two years or so of ministry. Napaka-ikli lang ng kanyang ika nga golden era. <clears throat> I woke up on my birthday three weeks ago, <clears throat> and I confess, sisters and brothers, when I opened my eyes, I did not say, thank you, God, for the last 56 years. Nope. I said, Gino oko, 56 years old na ko. The ceiling looked back down and asked, talaga, 56 years old? Ilang dukha na ba natulungan mo? Itong praying, praying mo, ikinahain na ba yan ng mga kanin at ulam sa hapag nila? Ikinamatrikula ba nila yan? Ikinabayad ba yan ng utang nila kahit kaunti? Itong theology mo, ikinabuhay ba yan ng namatayan ng loob? Ikinaluwag ba yan ng nagsisigip na dibdib? Ikinahimasmas ba yan ng mga nanggagalaiti? Sabi ko, walang hiyang kisa may ito ah. Nanunumbat. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, if you and I are lucky, we can live to be 100 years old. On average though, 80 to 85, that's all we have these days. But compared to Jesus' 33, that's plenty. Maybe that's one lesson Isaiah and Jesus are teaching us today. No matter how long or short our lives may, might be, we can make Isaiah's prophecy come true. Lalo na if you have more money, more power, more means than most people to bring glad tidings to the poor, liberty to captives, sight to the blind, relief for the oppressed, and to make every year of your life favorable to over 105 million Pinoys who have less than 105 pesos in their pitaka on any given day. If you're watching this and you're running for office, any office, and you win, imagine God's gift of six life years when, for a change, you go full throttle on making Isaiah's prophecy come true. What is six years out of a lifetime awash in wealth to uplift the rest. Anyway, you've already promised them the sun and the moon, right? And they believe you. What's six years off of your life to fulfill their hopes for a change? Jesus had only two years, but golden years they were for the people whose lives he touched. That's what golden era really means. Years of freeing not suppressing and jailing critics. Years of letting live, not salvaging. Remember that word? Years of telling the truth, not lying and lying some more kahit na fact-check na. Years of uplifting the poor and not further enriching cronies. Years of paying back what is owed and owning up that you stole. What makes any golden era is goodness and not systematic evil. By the way, we have a funny saying in Bisaya. I just need to tell you. Ang bakakon igsuon sa kawatan, ang sinungaling kapatid ng magnanakaw. Sisters and brothers, how many years have you and I got left? On your next birthday, when you open your eyes first thing in the morning, and if ever you don't feel like saying, thank you, God, for another year of my life, I pray anyway that a thousand others will say it on behalf of you, thankful for your having spent your life making Isaiah's prophecy come true in theirs. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Father sent his Son to us to proclaim the good news of his forgiveness and salvation. Mindful of this, let us pray to the Father that we may possess the Spirit of the Lord. Let us pray, Lord, listen to our prayer. Lord, listen to our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, and all ministers of the Word, may they tirelessly bring Christ's good news to the poor, the sick, the prisoners, and the lonely, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. For those who serve our country, may they fully grasp the Word of God as the source of power and authority, we pray. Lord, listen, listen to, to our prayer. prayer. For the end of the pandemic, May the word of God become the source of true hope for those who are still in agony because of sickness, separation, poverty, and hopelessness brought about by COVID-19, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. For all church organizations who are involved in biblical apostolate, may their initiatives of sowing the word of God may reach to complete fruition so that their lives and those whom they minister to may become a living witness of God's word, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead who listened and were nurtured by God's word, may they enter the heavenly court with all the saints of God, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. For those celebrating their birthdays, Ernest Escaler, Celia Borja, Ray Tan, Soy Medina, Irene Samontesa, Maricel Kianson, Remy Respicio, Lani Pedrosa, Gisa Marie Jimenez, Lanel Abueva Fernando, and Christy Boggs Racaza, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to our, our prayer. prayer. For the healing of Noah Francis Kianson, Leda Samonte and family, Emily Quaso, Alan Matutina, Linda Dogdosil, and Joy Dizon, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. For the repose of the souls of Carlos Medina Sr., Leonor Reyes Garmsen, Proceso Lawas Maligalig, Crispin Orpiano, Malu Santos, Loloy Urbistondo, and Fernie Pablo, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. For the special intentions of Marijo Mendoza and family, Aga Camarata, Pilucci Fernandez and family, Je Ching, Jerry and Annie Serrano go for their wedding anniversary. Jean C. and family, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our prayer. prayer. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. Let us take a few moments of silence to pray for your intentions in this Mass. Heavenly Father, let the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts find favor with you. Nourish us with your spirit so that we may do our share in bringing the good news to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, 
grant that they may profit us for salvation. This we ask to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself so that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and and profess your your resurrection resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that sharing of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one country and brotherhood and sisterhood by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us all to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, Ernesto, our Bishop, and all the men and women who minister to you, lay and religious alike. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may become children of eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear sisters and brothers, with deep faith, hope, and love, we call on God, our Father. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity and healing of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the gentle Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. 
grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray, pray for, for us. us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and the people you love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love one another and fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Maglingkod ng taos puso. Oh.